In this clip, we're going to learn about the transform node. Okay, so you may have noticed how in, you know, After Effects, we basically have our timeline and then we have all these inherent properties of a layer on that timeline. So whenever I bring in, you know, a robot like this in After Effects, I can toggle down, look at the position and start to move that around. Or I can simply click and drag and move it around up here in the viewer. Not so in Nuke. In Nuke, again, you need a node that allows you to do those kinds of movements. So that's going to be called the transform node. And I can find it right in here, transform. Or you can hit T or you can hit tab and type in transform. Now, I didn't have anything selected, so it just dropped the node in here kind of uh, by itself. So where would I put this? Well, if I wanna transform the whole thing here, I would put it after my merge node, and then I can move around my entire picture. But if I want to just move around the robot, I'm just gonna hit control Z to undo that. Then I need to put it between the robot and the merge. And now I can move the robot around independently of the rest of the image, which is really, really useful that we have the ability to add these transforms. One of the things that I really like about this system versus the way that After Effects does this is that, you know, sometimes you may have to, for instance, uh, put a null on something because let's say I want it to be transforming one way, like maybe I want it to be kind of going back and forth, left to right, but I also need it to be doing that across the screen. So maybe like if I wanted something to kind of be doing this if I wanted that to happen in After Effects, it would be a lot more keyframes, way more complex. Whereas in Nuke, I can just set up this kind of motion on a loop and then simply add another transform node to scoot it across. So you can do kind of more complex animations that require multiple transformations in the same uh, axes like that. And it's just way, way easier. And this also comes into play whenever you're doing things like tracking. Um, so once you apply your track to something like a transform node, you know, you're telling it, okay, I want all of that data to just go into the transform node. That becomes really easy to just add another transform node and then say, you know, move it around independently of the track, but it's still going to have the tracking data. So a lot of really cool uses that we'll probably be able to appreciate more a little further on in this course. Now, you can't only move around in the Y and X axes in in this. You can also rotate, scale, and skew as well, which is really cool. So in this transform node over here, you can see that I have the ability to rotate and it kind of has a similar thing going on as After Effects with the anchor point. You can see that that's kind of what this thing is, except in Nuke, it's called the center. And I can just simply come in here and start to manipulate those values to move that anchor point without actually moving the robot. So let's say I put in something like 500. You can see now when I rotate, it's gonna, it's gonna rotate relative to that center point. Now I also have scale, and again, it's going to be relative to the center, so I might need to put in something like 1500 to get this to be uh, maybe more like 1200, to be a little bit closer to the robot so that it's happening from a more robot-centric way so it's not you know moving him all around. Really cool. And I can also do that right here in the viewer as well, so I can like, come over here on this corner and start to pull that in and out for the scale. For rotate, I would go to the long arm and start rotating that. And then for just transforming, you're just gonna click right in the middle. So, there we go. And if you want to kind of only go in one axis, you can hover right over that edge there and then you can just scale in the one axis instead of um, where it's linked like this. 
Very, very cool. Now, we also have the ability to skew and nuke, which I don't use very often, but you may have some use for it. So you can come in here and have this skew along either of those axes. Really neat. Now, it's also got a skew order, so we can choose which one we want to have there. Again, we talked about center. Um, and then we also have motion blur. So if I set a keyframe with this transform node, so let's say I want to go ahead and do that. I have my translate right here. So I could just right click, set a key. I can also very easily set keys independently. So here I've only set a key in the X. I'll come over here, right click, set a key there. And then let's move him kind of over and down. It's automatically going to set another key at that point too. So you only have to set the first one um, on a keyframe that's already uh, bit on on a frame where a keyframe's already been set. So you can see it's just changing and overriding that one over and over. So I'm going to scrub forward a bit and then move, and you can see it also automatically set a key for me here. So let's come over here. These tools are pretty intuitive so I can just hit play and you see how he just is moving now obviously this is not a super realistic animation I'm just doing it to show you uh, so you get the picture now because we have motion blur I can go ahead and turn that on a bit and now whenever I hit play you can see that I've got a little bit of motion blur going along with that. And I can also go in and adjust things like the shutter to make it more or less blurry. Same way you can do with like a force motion blur, or pixel motion blur in After Effects. Um, so it gives you a little more control than just having like a default motion blur turned on. We also have motion blur nodes where you can just drop one of those on if you're if you don't use a transform, but maybe you've got something in Nuke that doesn't have uh, motion blur baked into your render. We've got nodes for that as well. So really fun stuff. Basically, the transform node is what's going to give you all of those inherent properties that you kind of take for granted just being there on every layer in After Effects. So don't forget about the transform node and how powerful it is. Now, this brings us to the end of module one, but let's go ahead and jump right into our second module where we're going to be learning about multi-channel workflow.